Hi everyone, this is Dr. Orkin Bajic and in this video we are going to focus on how we can solve a given mathematical model on Excel Solver. Okay, so if you watched my previous video about introduction to mathematical modeling, you are already familiar with this problem, but if not, that's okay because our main goal is to use Excel Solver, learn how to use Excel Solver, okay? So the description of that problem is on the right hand side here, so I'm going to quickly go over it to remind us what the problem was about. So we have a manufacturer and this manufacturer um, produces different types of furniture and in this problem we focus on two different types which are the dinner tables and sectional sofas each dinner table requires a total of six hours of carpentry work and two hours of finishing work. Each sectional sofa requires a total of 10 hours of carpentry and 10 hours of finishing work. Okay, so these are the requirements of these two items. Currently, the total amount that we can allocate to carpentry work is 200 hours and the total amount of time we can allocate to finishing work is 160 hours. So these are our limitations or resource constraints. The company makes a profit of $750 for each dinner table and $2,000 for each sectional sofa. The manager wants to determine how many tables and sofas to produce to maximize the profit. So the, the formulation is here. X1 represents the number of dinner tables to produce. X2 represents the number of sofas to produce. And I have my carpentry hours constraint and finishing work constraints and the sign restrictions over here. So X1 is the number of tables produced. X2 is the number of um, sofas produced. So I'm going to make this smaller because we are not really going to focus on that. Uh, like I said, the main goal of this video is to see how we can use Excel Solver to solve a given mathematical model. So I usually create a template and then input everything into the solver menu from there to make it more organized and make it uh, easier for myself to um, make sure that everything is inputted correctly. So I strongly recommend you to follow a template, uh, especially at the beginning of the uh, mathematical modeling learning process to make sure that we are uh, organized and we input everything correctly. Okay, so first thing first, you need to have uh, something called uh, solver when you go to data option on Excel on a Mac. So data, you have to see the solver option. If you don't see it, what you need to do is to go to tools at the top and then you will see Excel add-ins and then make sure that this solver add-in is check, checked. Okay, make sure that this is checked. If not, check it, say okay, and in most cases you will need to close Excel and then restart it to make sure that it shows up in your data menu, okay? So first thing that I do in my template is to list the parameters, okay? So what kind of parameters I have, what kind of values I know. So I have some data about carpentry, right? I know, um, how many hours of carpentry work each item uh, requires. I also have the information about um, how many hours of carpentry work we can do, okay? And I have a similar data for finishing work, so I list it in my template. And then I go to um, the, the other side of the table and list my decision variables. My decision variables are x1 and x2, where x1 represents the dinner tables and x2 represents the sectional sofas okay so what i will do here is i will enter the values so this cell will represent how many hours of carpenter work each table requires okay so from this constraint from this model i can see that the first constraint is the carpentry um work constraint and then I will put six here because the coefficient of, um, let me center these. The coefficient of X1 is six in the first constraint. 
And for sectional sofas, we have 10 hours of carpentry work. And again, if you are not familiar with the problem description, that's perfectly fine. As you can see, what I am doing is I'm basically listing my first constraint here because this constraint is for carpentry work and the second constraint is the finishing and the third is the sign restriction. Okay, so I basically put six times x1 plus 10 times x2, which is the left hand side of the first constraint. Okay, and then I'm going to open a new title here and I'm going to list the availability. Okay, how many hours of, let's put it over here, how many hours of um, carpentry work we can do? And that is given as 200 in my right hand side of the first constraint. Okay, it's also given in the problem description. Similar approach for the second constraint, two times x1 plus 10 times x2 and the right hand side is 160. Okay, so I basically listed all the numbers in my table. And then I also have an objective function here that represents my total profit. So I open a new title and type profit and then I list the profit for each item. So the coefficient in the objective function for x1 is 750. So I type 750 here and then 2000 for um, the sectional sofas. Okay, so these are the parameters that I know. Okay, again, the parameters represents parameters represent what I know. Okay, these are the values that I already know. Next step is I'm going to define my decision variable. So I'm actually going to delete this because I don't really need it. Um, so I'm going to put my decision variables here. And then I'm going to type x1 and x2 because I have two decision variables, which are x1 and x2. And I'm going to highlight these cells because when I solve this model, I'm, I want to see the solution, the optimal solution within these cells, okay? So we are going to input where we want to see the solution and I already marked those two cells in my spreadsheet, all right? So let's get into the constraints. Constraints. So a constraint is composed of two components, okay? the left hand side and the right hand side. So I'm going to put those into my table separately. How many constraints do I have in addition to the sign restrictions? Two constraints, one for carpentry work and another for, for finishing work, right? So I have two constraints. I can also basically copy and paste these uh, here, it doesn't really matter. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to type LHS, which represents left hand side, and RHS, which represents the right hand side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this constraint in these two cells, in these uh, two cells for um, the carpentry constraint. Okay, it's what I'm going to do. So the left hand side of this first constraint is 6x1 plus 10x2. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull 6 from my table times x1. Again, I highlighted these cells because that is where I'm going to see the optimal solution of these variables, okay? That's why I multiplied 6 by x1 plus 10 times x2, okay? So this is the left-hand side of the first constraint. Hit return on your Mac, and then the right-hand side is 200, which I listed in D8. So I pull it from D8 and my left-hand side and right-hand sides are ready. You are going to see zero here because I have nothing in these two cells. And if you multiply a value by zero, your result will be zero. That's why it's zero. But after I solve this, we are going to see um, some non-zero values uh, potentially. Okay. The second constraint, same idea, two times x1 plus 10 times x2 
And then the right hand side is 160. So I'm going to pull it from um, D9. So I have my right hand side here. So these are my constraints. I listed my constraints. And the next step that I will include will be the objective function. All right. So objective function. My objective function is 750 times x1 plus 2000 times x2. Okay, same idea as the constraints. I'm going to pull 750 from my table, multiply it by x1, 2000 times x2, and here's my objective function. All right. So I have my constraints listed here I have my objective function and I have my decision variables listed. I'm ready to solve this model. Okay, so we are going to go to data solver and you're going to see this menu. All right, so there are several questions here that we will need to answer. And after we answer all of those questions, we will be able to get the optimal solution. The first question is set objective. It's asking you where the objective function is listed. OK, so delete this and select this cell, which is where I listed my objective function. OK, next question is, is this a maximization or a minimization? This is a maximization question because I have maximization in my objective. So I'm going to leave it as max. Next question, by changing variables, it means where are your decision variables? So like I said, I highlighted these because that's where I want to see my optimal solution. OK, so I list those here. Next step is to add my constraints. So subject to the constraints, you are going to select add here. And what we are going to do is as you can see, this first component on the left is the left hand side and we have less than or equal to, equal to, greater than or equal to and the right hand side. OK, so the first constraint left hand side is in B14, which is here. It is a less than or equal to type of constraint if you look at our um, model at the top left. So I'm going to leave it as is. I don't need to change. But if I needed to change it, this is where I do it. And then the right hand side is 200. So I select C14. OK, so since I still have another constraint to add, I'm going to say add. And then I have another menu. And here the left hand side is B15. It is a less than or equal to constraint, as you see. And the right hand side is 160. OK, so. At this point. I would normally be done um, because I don't have any other constraints besides the sign restrictions. But here is a critical point. Even though I didn't list these as integers, um, due to the nature of this problem, we want these x1 and x2 to be integer valued once we solve them. OK, so if we didn't have a restriction like that, that the values of these x1 and x2 have to be integers, we would be done here and immediately solve it. But I'm also going to add this restriction that these x1 and x2 variables will have to be integer. So here's how I do it. So this cell reference kind of our left hand side. Now I'm going to select my decision variables. So G8 H8 and then I'm going to go to this menu here and I'm going to select int. OK, int represents integer. OK, by selecting this, you can see that it immediately typed integer, which means that these values have to be integer once we solve this model. Since I am done with my decision variables and constraints and objective function, I'm going to say OK. And last step is to select simplex LP here because we are solving a linear program and make sure this is checked in this because make unconstrained variables non-negative means that they are greater than or equal to zero. So make sure that it is checked. And at this point, we are done. All we need to do is to click on this solve here and we will have our optimal solution. So solver found the solution. All constraints and op optimal conditions are satisfied. Good news. Our model is feasible. We have an optimal solution. OK, so say OK to this. 
and you have your optimal solution. So this solution says the optimal value of x1 is 10 and optimal value of x2 is 14. So going back to our problem description, this means that the optimal number of dinner tables to produce is 10 and the optimal number of sectional sofas to produce is 14 with a profit of $35,500 total. Okay, so this is our optimal solution. So I'm going to go back to data and solver and I'm going to uh, click on this and I'm going to delete it. So let's say that we didn't enforce integer restrictions or let's say that in our problem we don't need to have integer restrictions, right? Because sometimes having fractional optimal solutions uh, it's fine, right? It's it's okay. But in our case, we enforce integer restrictions because you can't really produce two and a half tables, right? So you would probably want to uh, produce integer number of uh, tables or sofas. So let's say that I delete this so that I only have these two constraints. And by checking this, I add these sign restrictions. And if I solve it, Solver found the solution, everything is satisfied, and I'm going to say, okay, as you can see, I still found the same solution, okay? So even though I didn't restrict the solution to be integer, the solution still turned out to be integer, which is fine, okay? But again, if the model requires that the solution will have to be integer, make sure you go ahead and enforce them within this menu, okay? So this one was just the situation where even though you don't restrict them to be integer, the solution turned out to be integer anyways, okay? But it doesn't have to be that way all the time, all right? So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.